Hello everybody, welcome to Let's Play Dark Souls Part 2. Um, this is actually Take 2 for me, as you can see the character looks a little different. Um, that's because in all of my amazing, amazing stupidity I uh, used the wrong microphone and uh, we were using my webcam, which uh, didn't sound so good. I'll uh, put a quick clip right here. See there's an item over there, so we're gonna have to do a little bit of parkour. So you just run and you hit B while you're running. And uh yeah, as you can see, <laughs> it's uh didn't come out too good. So um I just made a new character. Um since it's the early game, you know, it took like three minutes, it wasn't that hard. Uh, I'm more upset over the you know half hour footage that we lost, but you know what? It was a practice run, so no big deal. So um Getting back into it properly now, um, we just landed in Lorgent, right? We just finished the tutorial area, we talked with this guy, he gave us our quest, we gotta go ring some bells. So before we do that, um, we're gonna go pick up some items that are gonna help us along the way. Um, like I said, Dark Souls is really cool where you can just access a bunch of things early on, get yourself set up, and get going. So the first thing we're gonna do is grab humanity because that's what I want to talk about. Um, as we head to our first item. So if we get a good look at us, you know, we look like we look like beef jerky. Yeah, really wrinkly, really gross. So why is that? Um, so like I mentioned in the last episode, we're undead. So when we die, we uh, come back to life at a bonfire. But you know, this isn't a perfect process. Each time we do that, it takes a bit of a toll on us, you know. And over time, that makes us, you know, really wrinkly and gross. And uh, when that happens for too much. You know, it's a very painful, horrible process. Um, here, let me uh, take off some clothes and you'll see, look, yeah, that, uh, that's gonna hurt. <laughs> so, over time, and especially with all the w brutal ways you're gonna die, you know, you kind of go insane. And so that's what it means to go hollow. It means you've lost your humanity. So, um, quick tip while we're here. If you go down an elevator, just step on the switch and then roll off. That'll send it back up. So, next time we come back down, it'll be waiting for us. Um, now you might be wondering, don't we need to go back up? Well, <laughs> we'll get to that in a bit. Um, in the meantime, I'm just going to grab this soul item here. And, uh, yeah, we're going to make our way to New Londo Ruins. Um, now, if you have the master key, you can go up this way and get some other cool items. Uh, we don't have it, so we're going to have to go the long way. Um, this guy's also just chilling here. I always thought that's funny. But, uh, yeah, let's, uh, let's head to what we need to do. So... On the way, I'll talk a little bit about New Londo. Um, before that, though, let's just grab this S-Dock. It's a little fencing sword. Real cool. And also over here in this pot is a body. Once it lands, we can see it's some transient curses. Those items are going to help us here properly. But the thing is, um, we're not going to take this place on too much right now. We're just in and out looking for one item. So, New Londo, what is this place? Um, so... Everything I told you about the undead people, imagine if they all decided to make a city together, right? Um, and that's what Nulando was. Now, Nulando saw better days, as you can see, and there's ghosts that are wandering around, so some uh, bad things happened here, but uh, we'll get to that properly when it's time to actually explore this place. In the meantime, we just want this Firekeeper soul. Um, so, yeah, we can't actually hit ghosts yet, so um, instead of letting them kill us, we're just going to kill ourselves. Um, oh no, I forgot to spend my souls. <laughs> oh no, okay, so, let me, uh, <laughs> let me run down there real quick and see if I can get those souls back, because I'd rather not die. I'm going to cut that out though, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, and we're back. Um, I got the 2200 souls back, um, because those are very important. Um, so we're just going to rest at the bonfire and level up. Now I do have the build that we're going for planned out. Uh, the first levels we need are going to be in strength. That's going to be for the weapon that I'm going to plan to use for the early game. And uh, that's actually going to be the next thing we're going to go pick up. So if we go this way, before we do that actually, we're going to go talk with this guy right here. Hello there. I believe we are not acquainted. I am Petrus of Thoralund. Have you business with us? If not, I'd prefer to keep a distance, if possible. Social distancing, right? Hello there. 
I realize that I have requested that we retain our distance. But I also want you to know that it is not meant in ill will. Here, take this as a token of peace. No, go ahead. It's for you. One penny. Thanks, dude. Oh my. You again. Oh, I know. How about this? I have to await my companions here anyway. So what if I were to teach you some miracles? Would that please you? Very well. Then first, a covenant with the gods. Alright, so we're going to join this covenant. Now, what a covenant is, it's kind of like a faction or a religion. Or maybe a cult for some of them. But there's various covenants throughout the game. Uh, we just joined the Way of Light, which I'll get into in a second here. Now let me share my miracles. Only their ultimate effectiveness will be determined by your efforts and your faith. Okay, so the way the way of white is going to work is that it's basically the early game covenant. And so multiplayer things, it'll it'll make it so you're less likely to get invaded, and it'll make it easier so you can find other way of white people to co-op with. It's not going to be too relevant. I'm actually playing in offline mode to try to prevent trolling, <laughs> but. We're going to do PvP stuff eventually, later on down the road. So in the meantime, let's just learn a gesture, Shrug, which is a pretty fun one. And let's take a look at the things he has for sale. So these are miracles. Miracles are for if you're doing, um, you know, uh, faith-based spells. Um, so, like, they're pretty self-explanatory, what they do here. Um, these are the early game miracles. They're not too fancy. But, you know, if you're a cleric um, and you want to get started out, this is a pretty good, helpful NPC. Um, and talismans are basically your magic wands, except for miracles. Come again. The effectiveness of the teachings depend upon your faith. Which is technically true, because, you know, the faith stat is how you make your miracles stronger. But uh, we're not going to be doing that. Um, not yet, at least. So, in the meantime, just come up here, grab a lost soul of the undead. And so now we're going to go... Um, we're gonna just jump down here. Um, it's a little menacing. Might be scary to do that at first, but if you don't know what's down here, but this is me showing you that there's a bunch of treasure. So let's see what we got. Um, cracked red eye orbs. That's for doing invasions. If you want to do some PvP, and here we have uh, Morning Star and a talisman. Those were what he was using. Um, here's the really useful thing. Uh, six Homeward Bones. Uh, these are really cool items. They let you teleport back to your last bonfire. It's a nice way to escape if you don't want to burn all your souls and kill yourself. And finally, we have some Lloyd's Talismans, which are these PvP items where if you throw them and hit somebody with them, they can't heal anymore. But uh, we're not going to be using that too much. So now we're going to go in the graveyard and try to not get killed by these spooky, scary skeletons. Um, so there's a few, sp it's, there's a few specific spots we want to go to, um, so we want the spear, um, oh, okay, okay, come on, through. that's the big skeleton, <laughs> um, he'll, he'll make mince meat out of this, uh, this is what we want, this Vihander, that's a big boy sword, and over here we do have a binoculars, okay, I'm gonna try to dodge and roll, bob and weave, float like a butterfly, sting like a bee, oh god, okay, okay, good. Just heal quickly. Hey. So there is uh, one more thing to grab, which isn't awfully important, but it's like a thing I can show you. So it's the round shield there. Ah. It's not my good shield, but it's a shield. Okay. And we're dead. Yeah, that's what we get for stepping into the wrong neighborhood. But um, <laughs> now that we're dead, they're going to go back to just laying down collecting calcium skeleton things but um yeah so uh that sword that we picked up this is Vihander here um it says we can't use it but we actually can so the strength requirement is 24 but that's only if you're one-handing it if you're two-handing it you only need two-thirds of the strength and uh that's exactly what we have as you can tell this sword is um pretty chunky uh <laughs> compared to what we were using before um, it's also heavier though, so now we're uh, rolling slowly, but I'm wondering if we can still mid-roll with all of our armor on. Oh yeah, see that's a bit much, so I'll take off the helmet, and then we'll do that for now. 
Um, so one last thing. We're ready to depart upwards now. Um, oh, actually. So we picked up that Firekeeper's Hole, but I didn't say what we are going to do with it. Um, for that, we come down here, and we talk to this girl here. Now, she can't actually talk, um, but she can reinforce it for us. So now you'll see, in the bottom left, we now have an Estus Flask plus one. What that's going to do is, when we use it, it's going to heal us for more than it did before. Um, really helpful, and that's why I always, always recommend going for that Firekeeper's Hole. Unless you're doing like a under two hour speed run, but we're not doing that, so definitely can help us. So I'm going to use a humanity here to sort of demonstrate um, its purpose. So like I said, when you go hollow, you turn into bacon, but humanity is your solution for that. So you go to a bonfire, you'll see in the top left, because we used it, we now have one humanity on us, and if we burn that humanity, it makes us normal again. So yeah, now let's uh, get up and move on. So this guy, he's yellow instead of red. Um, we're just going to pretend he's a Simpsons character. But uh, yeah. Upwards we go. It's now time for the actual game of Dark Souls. So, ooh, yeah. Be careful there. Okay, we got him. Ooh. Yeah, watch out for that attack. As you can see, this thing does a lot of damage. And if they don't actually block the attack, we can definitely one-shot them. So if you get your timing right and hit them before they hit you, they don't stand a chance. Uh, so before we run and get those items, we're going to deal with these guys, because they're going to be pretty annoying. Oh, I missed, but... Okay, we can still block with this. Oh, okay. Yeah, alright, alright, hold up. <laughs> Two for one. Ah, you suck. Okay, heal up. Oh, and one attack I didn't demonstrate yet is. Oh, okay. I'll save it for later. Actually, um, this is the backstab. I don't think uh, <laughs> that's not what I was talking about, but I don't think I showed that off yet. Um, all you have to do is do a light attack. Down he goes. Um, all you have to do is a light attack when you're behind someone, and it enters a special animation and does a whole bunch of damage. So, like I said, there's a lot of soul items all around Fire Link. I didn't get them all, but um, I'll sort of leave that as a fun surprise for you guys. Um, feel free to explore all around every nook and cranny. You can get a handful of soul items. So this Ring of Sacrifice is pretty cool. It's basically an insurance policy, so if you die while wearing it, it'll break, but you don't lose your souls like we did before <laughs> um, when we jumped off. And then you don't have to go back and get them, so you can wear it as just like backup, or I like to save it for specific points in the game that get annoying. Um, but uh, yeah, let's uh, let's carry onward. So here's a rat. And you can just do a little stab. Um, by the way, what I just did there is a rolling attack. Um, every weapon has a unique rolling attack, and it's as simple. Just as soon as you're done rolling, just attack. There you go. Um, that's the only way to stab with this thing, which is uh, really helpful in narrow corridors like this. But after making our way through the sewer and up these stairs, now we're in level one, the Undead Berg. Okay. Nice. So that's why I like this sword. It's this. A lot of damage, a lot of surface area. Really great weapon overall in the early game. And really good late game too if you um, stick with it. Okay, so. Let's go down this way to find the secret path where we can get a few items. So we do want to watch out because there's an ambush here. Um, you know, it's not too bad. These guys are really nothing, but they can catch you if you're not careful. So then we're just going to come in here and grab this thing, another soul. Now, they only give a few hundred souls each, but we've uh, we've gotten quite a few so far, and they do add up. Um, the way I like to use them, though, is rather than just burn through a bunch, just, you know, if you, let's say you need a thousand souls to level up, and you only have 800, you just pop one 200, and there you go. So we got a few more, these guys here. We're just going to sort of 
break their fingers with our sword, which, you know, there's a lot of brutal deaths in Dark Souls, but, you know, that one right there always makes me wince, because, <laughs> you know, look at the size of that thing. You don't want that coming down on your fingers. Uh, um, anyway, right here we have a funny item, rubbish, All right? Let's go ahead and actually read the description on that. Uh, right here. So, rubbish with no value. Who in their right mind would bother carrying this around? Perhaps you need help. Well, I definitely uh, don't disagree there. Uh, so we're going to use that shrug emoji that we got there. Yeah. <laughs> Great one. Okay, so let's uh, climb up the ladder. And then we can get the real prize of this whole little detour. Way over there. Um, nothing too fancy, something we've already seen. Just uh, one humanity. And then that guy, yeah, see, I don't know where this guy comes from. But... He always ends up here somehow. So now that we've cleared this out, um, that's a fog wall. So remember when I said that they uh, don't always lead to bosses? Well, this is one of those. You just walk through and... Oh, cool. We're still in the level. Um, yeah, take note of this area right here. We can't make that jump quite yet. But if we make our way up here... And oh my god. Yeah. That's a, that's a big dragon. We're going to see more of him later, but for now we don't have to worry about him. So, oh, yep, that nearly got me. Yeah, be careful of those jump attacks. Ooh, nice. Okay. Ooh. Nice little challenging area here. Nice, like, warm-up. I always like Undead Berg, whether you're new to the game or... Whether you're a veteran, this is just always a great way to just uh, warm up with things, you know? Um, okay, so as you can see, we do have a bonfire here. So we're going to go ahead and rest here real quick. Um, now, I'm not going to level up. There's a few things that I'm going to need those souls for, which we'll get to in a moment here. So let's just kill these guys. Um, I don't know if I mentioned, but resting at a bonfire will respawn enemies. Um, you know, it does heal you and it does give you back your Estus, but it uh, resets the level, so always keep that in mind. Okay. So over here we have some enemies with shields. Now, that attack I was talking about before that we can use is going to help us out here. So do a forward R1, and it does a nice little kick attack, which can break shields. That's a nice way to get through enemies that are turtling up. So let's go this way. And smash through here. And if we keep moving along, we'll notice another ambush. So you don't want to just charge in. If you just go forward a little bit, you'll get two at a time. Oh god, okay. Alright, that could have been bad. Thankfully there was only two. So let's uh, take out the rest of these guys. And kill a barrel on the way. I noticed too, you can get a sneak peek of a later level down there. But we're not going to go there yet. And I believe actually too, somewhere around here, there's a way to jump off and get down there. Um, like I said, you know, Dark Souls is really cool about that. A lot of sequence breaking you can do. But uh, we're going to go take the normal path. So here we have throwing knives. Those are cool items, just sort of temporary one-use projectiles. But um, here's that jump I was talking about before. Now that we're on the roof, we should be able to make this. And there we are. So we're going to make our way up here and find the helpful little item, the crossbow. Um, so yeah, that'll let us just, you know, shoot some bolts. Um, not too important. We're not going to have too much of a use for it right now. But, I may as well grab it for thoroughness. Okay, well, alright, we both messed that up. And that guy is gonna just stare at us. Yeah, keep, keep walking. Oh, I forgot about this. Another soul item, okay. Nothing too special. Alrighty, so let's come up this way. And if we head back over here, back down.
down this way, there was one more door we could take. Right here. And here we have our buddy, the undead merchant. Let's see what he has to say. Well now, you seem to have your wits about you, hmm? Then you are a welcome customer. I trade for souls. Everything's for sale. <laughs> so yeah, he said he's a merchant. Let's see what he has for sale. Um, so here you can just get you know some basic disposable items. You can get um, here's some special items and a handful of simple weapons. Uh, nothing that we're too interested in. Um, ammo for any projectiles and the chainmail set, which again we're not too interested in. Uh, what we are interested in is this. This is a super like helpful item. This is how you write messages. If you're playing online, you'll notice those little orange signs. Um, those are actually written by other players, and you can actually rate them up and down whether or not you like them. Um, and here we have the residence key that's going to let us open some doors in this level. And the bottomless box is how we can store our items um, at a bonfire, which is really helpful. Um, so let's see what else he has to say. Things are getting treacherous in these parts. A horrible goat demon has moved in below. And up above, there's that humongous drake and a bull demon too. If you stick around this place, it might end up being your grave. <laughs> Alright, so he gave us a warning there. Uh, we saw the drake earlier, and we're going to see the bull demon soon. But um, for now, we're just going to press on. Thank you kindly. <laughs> okay, so that wraps up this sort of like first chunk of the level. Um, real quick before I end, we're just going to take a look in here now that we have the residence key. And we're going to find that we have a wooden shield. In fact, I actually don't know if you need the residence key for that, but um, just in case I wanted to wait. So. That's going to do it for now, guys. Um, thank you for watching. That was part two, and I'll see you soon in part three.